Hello everyone, this is Professor Keen, and I've been asked to work through a couple of problems. I thought it might be best if I just do these uh, using a video and my sketchbook. And so these are some of the problems relating to angular motion that I assigned in week 13 of AP Physics. So let's go ahead and start into these. So I want to start out with the one where you have a mass suspended from a string attached to a disc that acts like a pulley. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by just sketching the situation. So let's suppose we have this mass right here. I'll call this M. And let's suppose that we have this disc right here that acts as a pulley and the mass is suspended by the string from the pulley. And let's suppose that the mass of this pulley, I'll call this little m, and its radius is r right here. And I give you some of these values in the problem. Why don't I go ahead and write them down? I think I tell you that the diameter of the disc is five centimeters, so the radius is gonna be two and a half centimeters. And I tell you that the mass of the pulley or the disc itself is two kilograms, and that the mass that you're hanging or suspending from it is 10 kilograms. And so let's go ahead and work through this problem. I know I ask questions like what's the torque exerted by the string on the pulley and what's the angular acceleration of this pulley and so on. I'm not going to answer them in the exact order that I asked them. Okay, so let's uh, figure out the answers to some of these problems. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to set up a free body diagram for this mass hanging right here. So what are the forces acting on it? Well, there's a tension force, the string is pulling up on it, and you've got its weight, like this. And you've also got this pulley, that you have this torque being exerted on the pulley that's trying to make it spin around in this direction. So we're gonna have two sets of equations. One equation that uh, dictates the motion of this falling mass, and another equation of motion that dictates the uh, angular acceleration of this pulley. And then those are going to be uh, linked to each other by a relationship between the acceleration of the falling mass and the angular acceleration of this pulley. So let's uh, first of all write down the torque equation. The torque equation. And that is for the pulley, the sum of all the torques acting on it is equal to its rotational inertia times its angular acceleration. And what are the torques acting on it? Well, it's going to be equal to the tension in the string. The string is actually, um, is in fact, what is exerting the force on it, trying to make it rotate, times the lever arm R, and that is equal to its rotational inertia times its angular acceleration. Okay, what about the force equation? This is another equation. This is derived from Newton's law of, second law of motion applied to this falling mass. Well, you've got the weight pulling it down minus the tension pulling it up, and that's equal to its mass times its acceleration. I should be careful. This is capital M, the mass of this suspended mass. I'll make this a little bit more obvious. The suspended mass is a 10 kilogram mass. Okay. So what I can do now, I've got these two equations right here, and I'm going to solve this equation for the tension. So I'll have the tension is equal to mass times acceleration, um, I guess that'd be, well, let me go back for a second, I want to be a little bit more careful here. When I solve for the tension, I'll move the T over to the right side and the MA over to that side, and so I'll get tension is equal to the weight minus mass times acceleration. Well, we know what the weight is just, it's mass times G minus mass times acceleration, so that would be the mass times G minus A, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna plug this tension formula in up here. And when I rewrite that, let's do this down here, I'll have the tension, which is capital M times G minus A times the radius of the pulley is equal to the rotational inertia times alpha, okay? So what are the things that I know here well, let's think ahead. I know what the mass is, 10 kilograms. I know what G is, it's about 10 meters per second squared. I don't know what the acceleration is. I'm gonna to have to figure out what this is. I know what R is, that's 2.5 centimeters. Do I know what the rotational inertia is? Well, not yet, but I can figure that out because I know the mass of the disc 
and I know the radius of the disk. So I can figure this out, and I don't know the angular acceleration, but I do know that that's going to be related to the acceleration of the mass. There's going to be a connection between these two. Okay. So what is, let's start with that last point, what's the connection between the acceleration of this mass as it's going down, it's got some acceleration, and the angular acceleration of this? Well, the relationship is going to be given by the acceleration is equal to r times alpha. If you don't remember how we got this, you might think back to the relationship between an arc length, r and theta, and then if this arc length is changing, let's say you have a change in the arc length with respect to time, that'd be r times a change in the angle with respect to time. So this is, let me draw a little picture here. So this would be an arc length, that would be theta, and this is r. And then if, so this would be like a velocity, the speed of this point, the string uh, unraveling is equal to r times omega. And then if I wanted to find the rate of change of this during some time interval, I'd have the change in omega due to in a change in time, and that would be the acceleration of the mass is equal to r times alpha, which is the rate of change of the angular speed. So that's where I got this equation here. This is a little aside to remind you of this. Okay. So what we can do now is let's just eliminate alpha in favor of a. So alpha is a over r. So I'm going to rewrite this as mass times g minus a times r equals now this right here, that's the rotational inertia of a disk, which I know is one half the mass of the disk times its radius squared. And alpha, as I mentioned a moment ago, is A over R. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for the acceleration of this mass right here. So let's do this. We'll say M times G times R minus M times A times R equals one half the little mass times r, one of these r's is going to cancel out, so then I have an a right here. So let's collect all the accelerations together. I'll have acceleration times one half m r plus uh, the capital M times r. And over on this side, I'll have capital M times g times r, like that. And then what I can do is, I guess, um, all the R's cancel out. Uh, is that right? Uh, yep, all the R's cancel out. And I have M over one half of little m plus big M multiplied by G equals the acceleration. So that's the acceleration of this mass. And let me make sure that we have capital M's right here. And so I can figure out what this is because I know the big mass is 10 kilograms and the little mass is two kilograms. So one half of that is one kilogram and plus 10 kilograms. And G is 10 meters per second squared. And that is equal to the acceleration. So 10 over 11 times 10. So 10 elevenths of 10. I don't have a calculator handy, but 10 elevenths times 10 meters per second squared. So you can figure out what this acceleration is. That's going to be acceleration of this falling mass. It's important to keep in mind here that if this disk did not have any mass, so if it was like, or a very, very small mass, what would happen is this term right here in the denominator would be just about zero. And as a result, you'd have capital M over little m, that becomes one, and the acceleration of this mass would just be equal to g. That is, it would just undergo free fall. So, so to the extent that it does not undergo free fall, it's because this disk right here has some rotational inertia. It's hard to get it spinning, okay? All right, I'm running out of space here. So let's go through and see if we can um, solve some of these other aspects of this problem. We just said that the acceleration was equal to, I guess, 100 meters squared per second. Oops, sorry. Let's go back. 100 meters per second squared divided by 11. We could figure out the angular acceleration of this by just taking the acceleration divided by the radius. So you take 100 
over 11 and divide by the radius, which would be 2.5. And again, I don't have a calculator handy, but you can work these out, and that will be the angular acceleration, and that would be in radians per second squared. Um, another thing that's being asked in this problem is what is the tension in the cord? Well, we can figure that out from this formula right here. The tension is equal to the mass times g minus a. So you can just plug in this mass, it would be 10 kilograms times g, which is 10 meters per second squared, minus the acceleration is 100 over 11 meters per second squared. And you can plug these in and figure out what the tension is. And then finally, I think I ask you, how long does it take for this mass to fall a distance of three meters? Well, that isn't that hard to do. It's undergoing uniform acceleration, and the height that through which it falls is going to be one half the acceleration times time squared. You would plug in your three meters right here. You would plug in the known acceleration right here, and you could solve for the time it takes to hit the ground. Okay, so that's how you're going to solve that part of the problem. And then finally, I think I ask what's its speed when it hits the ground. And you can just say the velocity that it has is equal to the acceleration it has times the time that it took to hit the ground and plug in the numbers. Okay, that should be enough to get you to be able to solve this problem. Good luck, and I'll talk to you next time.